Hello everyone, good morning, happy Friday. Good morning, teacher. Hi, teacher. Hi, teacher, good morning. Can you believe it? We have one more week together. Amazing. Time flies when you're having fun. Awesome. Hope you guys are doing well. We'll start off uh, this morning at 8.15 doing our TOEFL review. I have included the link, so go ahead and open up your browser if you want. And um, it should open up around 8.15. So we got a few minutes here. The chit chat. Any any uh, anything on your mind this morning? Anything you want to discuss? Ask about questions? Just general comments? Woke up to some rain this morning. Is it raining where you guys live? I think it rained a little bit last night. One of the things to do, especially, I don't know if this is worldwide, but like in the United States, when you are trying to make small talk, one of the things to talk about is the weather. Small talk. It's like you meet somebody or you're just chit-chatting with a stranger. Maybe you're in the grocery line, you're at the store, meeting up with somebody and you're just trying to make small talk. The thing to do is to talk about the weather. That probably doesn't translate here so much because comparatively speaking in Aguas Calientes, the weather doesn't change all that much. Not like where I'm from in St. Louis, Missouri, where the, cha the weather changes every day. They have a saying that if you don't like the weather, just wait a day because it will change. It will be different. It will be completely different. It's not uncommon for one day to the next to have drastic changes in the temperature. Maybe one day it's sunny, the next day it's, it's a huge storm. It's very common. How do you guys make small talk? Spanish or in English? Like in, in Spanish, you're just uh, at a, a store, maybe a restaurant, you meet somebody, you make small talk. What do you guys do? Well, me, today I'm going to put, I think uh, the translate of nacimiento, it is not, no existe, o si? And what is, what is that, uh, Liz? Can you um, explain that? Well, my mom and my brothers uh, are going to be here for, well, he is going to, um, well, visit me. And we are going to put the nacimiento. Ah, okay. The, like, the, is that a nativity scene? Like the, that the, like, uh, Christ and apostles and all of that? Yeah. Okay. Nativity scene. So that's a family thing then, Liz, for you guys? For your family? Yeah, it is. Great. It's a tradition. Oh, that's great. And your family's coming from where? To my house, because ah. I don't live with her. Ah, okay, but are they? Are they? Where are they coming from? Are they here in the same city, or are they? Yeah, coming? we are in the same city, but I live with my grandparents, and that's why. Okay. Well, that's good. Those are special moments. I know. Um, for us. Putting up the Christmas tree is very similar. Having all the the boys come, they're older now, but we still like to <laughs> we still like to do that, and that's it's a good uh, good good moments having the the family together and doing things like that, especially these days, right, with all the stress going on in the world. But yeah, great. Anybody else want to share anything? What do you guys drink in the morning? This is my, I'm drinking green tea this morning. 
I usually like to stay away from caffeine because it I makes always, me crazy. I always drink uh, green tea or matcha. Ah, I love matcha. I love <laughs> matcha. I like buying the matcha from... Um, where it's either, I get confused if it's from Costco or from uh, Sam's. I think it's from Costco. But uh, they have... Yeah. yeah, in the packets. Uh-huh. Oh, it's good. Um, it's delicious. Well, some of my friends have a, a coffee store. And that's why I have a lot of matcha because he gave it to to me free. <laughs> well, that, well, that's good. Free's good. <laughs> or free's <Yeah>. good. <laughs> What's the name of the coffee? Um, the cafe. It is. Um, well, not next, but in from maybe of the Ua. Uh In front of the uh, university. Yeah. In front of the university. All right, on uh, Universidad? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Do you remember the name of it? Of the... Of the, of the uh, cafe? The name is Frego. Frego? Yeah. Awesome. How long has he been in business? He or she, not sure. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Cool. I don't know, Dad. All right. I always have, I don't know, it's a habit I have when I hear, like I go into a, a eating establishment or any restaurant or I like to ask how long they've been in business. And I usually like to say if, it's, if they've been in business for a long time, they'll be happy to share that or if they're a new business, right? Okay. <laughs> What do you guys drink in the morning? What's your favorite be beverage in the morning to, to get going? Coffee. Coffee. The go-to coffee. I used to drink coffee every day, but the caffeine didn't agree with me. I like, I like caffeine, but it doesn't like me. So I had to cut back. Anybody else have anything to share? I'm going to jump in, say some, say a few things. Got one more week together. I drink uh, I drink water, and I think this is so crazy because the water is cold. <laughs> <laughs> you like cold water, or just it's cold because it's cold outside? Is it room temperature? The first. <laughs> uh, water's good. Water's good. Absolutely. Stay hydrated. Absolutely. You guys eat breakfast in the morning before you start class with me, with us, in the at eight o'clock. Do you guys eat, or do you eat later? Yes, before. Eat before? No, because I don't have time. <laughs> I have other things to do. Yeah, it's hard to find time. A lot of times, you, teacher. I'm sorry. And you, teacher? Uh, no, I typically don't eat in the morning. Um, I usually eat. I I usually eat later in the afternoons. In fact, I uh, my window of the time that I eat is kind of small, um, just because I feel better that way. I don't know why. If I eat smaller meals and more meals during the day, it, I feel worse. So I usually. And I, I usually eat later in the, like, 12, 1 o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll teach you. <laughs> yeah. But they recommend, you know, some people say, no, you should eat breakfast in the morning, you know, because that gets you going. And I think the main thing is, I think the main thing, especially for you guys going to school, and you have classes from 8 o'clock usually, 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning, depending on what semester, till about f two o'clock is that just the diet, like what you put in your, <laughs> your mouth so that you're putting in a uh, decent food, you know, a lot of protein, just whole foods and not a lot of candy and sugar and all of that where it can really mess up your concentration and make you feel horribly during the, during your classes. So I think it's important to really pay close attention to your body how you feel when you eat certain foods. 
so that you feel good during during the day. Especially again, right now it's not a big deal because you can kind of sneak in some food at home when you're going to class. But it's a little bit different when you get to school and you know the cafeteria. Although it's fairly close to the uh, to our building, you know we have a cafeteria within walking distance. That's good. Uh, students used to have to walk halfway across the campus because this um, the restaurant that we have now that's close right by the swimming pool. Um, it didn't used to be there, right? It, it's only been there for I don't know maybe eight years, ten years, or something, maybe less. So students had to, they complained because they had to go clear halfway across the campus to get some food, right? But now it's a little bit easier, and uh, you know it makes I think it's easier for students now to get get some food if you're not going to bring your lunch. Of course, if you're bringing your lunch, you want to bring some good food. Some good, you know, eat a good diet. It's very important. Yes, indeedy. Anybody else have anything to to share? What do you guys? How, what do you guys talk about? Like in small talk, what do you do to? Even in Spanish, you can think about it in Spanish. Like, what's a common thing to say when you don't know what to say when you especially in doesn't matter if you know the person or not but it's typically when you don't know the person maybe you know again you're in these you're at a restaurant or a, a maybe a clothing store or something and you're you you find an opportunity to create some small talk what do you guys do usually i said you and when I, the person is in my university. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, especially if you're around the same age and you know you're both students, especially if you're at the university, of course, and you find somebody, hey, what are you majoring in? That's always a good good way to strike up a conversation. To strike up a conversation, that's a phrasal verb. To strike up a conversation just means you're going to create a conversation right, right, on the, right in the moment. Right? Strike up a conversation. Anybody else? What do you guys do to create small talk? Well, I what I, what I do is like talk a topic that is like in the moment. For example, right now, I start with COVID, like the conversation that how how has been going with their family, and then from there, we'll talk about other things. Yeah, that's that's definitely good. Anything that's going on in the news, right? And um, I've obviously COVID is in the news these days, so that would be a good topic. Uh, we all have something in common there, in the sense that we're all in it and uh, concerned about it. So yeah, that's that's good. Anything in the news? Definitely. Yes. <laughs> Any other suggestions? Any other ways that you guys strike up a conversation? For example, <clears throat> for example, asking uh, what are your favorite hobbies or what your favorite things to do. For example, uh, listen to music, read books, uh, be on the internet. For example. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, especially like if it's your first date, if you're going out on a date with someone, and you're getting to know the person, right? And you're trying to figure out, you know, who this person is. You could ask, you know, things that you like to do to find what you have in common so yeah that's always a good uh icebreaker icebreaker it's a good icebreaker right so when you're talking with someone especially if you're going out on a date you're like okay what can i talk about what can i talk about you really don't know the person hey what do you like what kind of music do you like absolutely any others any other ideas Maybe say hello and hello. How are you? Uh, the uh, the day is uh, like this. It's pouring. It's sunny. It's it's a hot day. I don't know. Yeah, you could you talk about. Yeah, absolutely. You could talk about the weather. 
things that are going on maybe or maybe your trip over if you you know you're stuck in traffic or you know something that led up to that day something that happened to you that particular day one of the things um i hear a lot too is especially this i would say more with women than men perhaps but they comment or compliment someone's clothing or shoes or hair Right, they just come up. Oh, I, or uh, if there's a baby or something. Oh, this cute baby, right? They go up to maybe grab their cheeks or something. I don't know, but that's another way of creating <laughs> small small talk, right? You see some perfect stranger. Oh, I like your hair. I like your dress. I like your shoes. Things like that. All right, my All friends. Right. Enough small talk. Let's get into the the meat of the matter. Let's get. Let's begin our TOEFL, if you haven't already, hopefully you've had a chance to download the audio. If it helps, I uploaded it to the temp folder. So go ahead and begin at this time. If you're going to listen on your computer, we'll do that here. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, guys, and we'll get started. When we finish here, we'll have some time to continue with our ePortfolio. And if you need time for your podcast, of course, you may do that. So let's get to it. Hopefully now you can open up the questions. Please let me know if you're not able to before we get started. Can you guys uh, see the questions? Yes. Yeah. All right. I'm going to play just a second of the audio. If you can tell me if you can hear the audio. All right, guys. Go ahead and submit if you haven't already. And uh, just looking here at the messages and uh, die. Sorry, I just got your message. If you guys ever had problems during the audio, um, it's always best to send the messages in the in private messages because I was I just missed it uh, in this public since I don't have it uh, up during the the uh, audio. But hopefully, die, you were able to access the audio there. All right, so go ahead and submit, guys, your responses. And uh, this week, all of our TOEFL review questions for, for practice. Next Friday will be our last um, audio, and that audio will be the grade that I take. And after you get your results on Friday, I'm going to offer the following week during exams week, and we're talking about the week of the 14th through the 18th. Um, I'll offer more listening opportunities uh, for those who want to try to improve their grade. The Again, just to repeat what we've talked about in other classes, the, the listening part of your grade for this class is 40%, okay, based on the syllabus. 40% of your grade will come from the listening from the TOEFL. And I think I shared with you in prior classes the grade breakdown. If you get, I think, 50% or more, you get a 10, and then there's a breakdown um, for, for your grade based on, based on the percentage correct. Okay? So uh, let me, I'm sharing my screen here, so you should be able to see my screen. Let me go to... See the final listening. Okay, I don't have it here. The grade. I think I posted it in a prior class, so I'll have to. I'll pull that up and I'll include that in this assignment that's dated next Friday. Okay, December eleventh. Okay, you can find this in the Notion page, uh, just so that you're aware again of the the grading system. So again, if anyone wants to redo it, I'll offer it the following week, the week of the fourteenth through the eighteenth. Um, probably Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, depending on uh, demand, depending on how many want those opportunities. I will ask everyone after the, um, after the review on the 11th, I'll ask if there is anyone interested in retaking it. Okay, and I'll do the same after Monday's application and after Wednesday's application. Okay, so based on demand, I will offer it uh, for anyone who wants a, uh, another opportunity, and I will always choose the highest grade of uh, your score. But that's how I'll figure the 
uh, the total 40% grade for listening, okay, from uh, these, these reviews, these TOEFL reviews. All right, guys. Today, I'm going to open up the ePortfolio 5. This is today's assignment, today's task. And I included the link in the chat, so if you want to open it up or if you just want to look at my screen. What I added to this list of tasks from yesterday, right? I basically included everything we talked about yesterday in terms of Creative Commons. I think it's important that we're aware of what Creative Commons is and how we need to apply Creative Commons in our own websites. Remember yesterday, what was the main thing that you recall? What's the, the main idea about Creative Commons? Can anyone want to kind of explain what we discussed yesterday in terms of Creative Commons? Anybody want to uh, kind of paraphrase what we talked about? What's the main idea about Creative Commons license in terms of our own ePortfolio? Any, anybody want to make a comment? Well, I haven't um, done the ePortfolio yet. I was doing the other, well, what we talked about last time, um, I was doing the other projects that I, well, all right. So regardless if maybe you've uploaded certain images, uh, what do you recall from yesterday's discussion where we I explained what Creative Commons was or is and how we should apply it to our own ePortfolio? Anybody recall? You said that we have to put uh, this comment so we could not have problems with um, los derechos and all of those things. All right. And when, when do we use a Creative Commons license? When do we include it in terms of your own ePortfolio? When we want to put an image in our ePortfolio or a video or audio. Mm -hmm. And what kind of video or audio or video and image, what, what kind? Can you explain when you would use it? What type of audio or video? <laughs> Anybody else? An audio or video or image that we don't create that is not ours. That's right. That's the that's the key point. If you create the image, if you create the audio, if you create the video, that's different. Right? Because you're the creator. You're the author, you're the photographer, you're the content creator. It's your work. You own it. But if you use an image, a video, or an audio, or a document, a Word document, a PDF, any type of object, online object, that's not yours, that's coming from an outside source, then we have to make a decision. We have to know, first of all, is it under a Creative Commons license? If it's not, or if you're not sure, then don't use it. Right? We, we have to be really careful because your ePortfolio is public. It's different than if you were creating this in OneDrive just for our purposes, just for my eyes only, or just for our group's eyes only. That's different. You can do pretty much anything you want because we're not really sharing it to the world. But your ePortfolio... You have to be really careful. And so when you're finding an image, a document, an audio, a video, it's 
coming from an outside source, we have to make sure that it's under a Creative Commons license. Okay, so that's the key point. What Monica said is when it's someone else's work, we need to make sure that it's under a Creative Commons license. So we talked yesterday about how to find this work, right? We need, we need ways to find this information. And I think I shared yesterday a link to what's called a Creative Commons search. And this is in today's ePortfolio 5. Under Creative Commons, there's a video here. And there's a link. And if you click on this link, this will take you to a website where you can search for just Creative Commons content. You can search images. I think you can search other things as well. Um, and that's that's basically it. Now, just so you know, probably most of you are, are familiar with Wikipedia. We didn't talk about Wikipedia. But if you're cu curious about, well, this idea of Creative Commons, this is might be new for you perhaps, Everything that's uploaded in Wikipedia is under a Creative Commons license. Notice here at the very bottom, Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike. This is a CCBYSA. This is one type of Creative Commons. And so just so that you understand, everything that's in Wikipedia, which is fairly well known at this point, a lot of people use it, this is a Creative Commons license. This allows anyone to repurpose, reuse, redistribute this information. Okay, this is uh, one way that it's used. Okay, so we're going to do the same. So when you create your ePortfolio, if it's something that you create, you're more than, uh, well, I encourage you to list it as Creative Commons license. If you don't, uh, that's fine. It's not, I, I'm more concerned about content that is not yours okay and that's what i want you to be more concerned about if you have specific questions about wanting to license your own work which again is free there's no lawyer involved it's very simple you simply post a note someplace on your website that says this content is licensed under creative commons Okay, and I again, I would rather probably just deal, help you individually if you guys want to do that. That's not a major concern for us at this point. Okay, the main thing again is if you're using other people's content. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're developing your ePortfolio. Um, so the last thing I want to share with you here is the ePortfolio checklist. Now we're gonna have another week to work on our ePortfolios, but I want you to start taking a look at this checklist, this ePortfolio checklist that I've included in this page ePortfolio 5. And we'll talk more specifically next week about it, but I want you to take a look at <clears throat> what to think about. It's like a checklist that you can review as you're making changes to your ePortfolio, right? The use of images, making your, your homepage attractive, making it um, engaging to the audience when they visit your website, right? So you might have some sort of greeting, a quote. Of course, you're going to have your video that introduces yourself. So if you haven't completed that, I would go ahead and do that. A navigational bar. In fact, uh, Susie, can I share with the class your ePortfolio? May I do that? Sure, sure. All right, so yes. Susie, I think, made a, a last-minute change or some, some kind of change in her, her link. So she recently sent me hers. So let me see if I can find that. As you can see, all my chats here. Yeah, this is it. All right, she's using uh, Google Sites, but the concept is the same. All right, she has uh, a, a, a name. All right, she's given it a name. Right, she's has a, a, a greeting here. And what I like right away is the use of her navigational bar. 
Now, she has decided to move it on the left-hand side. That's fine. Some of you may decide to have it along the top. That's fine. But the main point here is that she started a category called English Skills. And a drop-down menu now takes the user to different parts to, of her pages. So she has one for grammar, writing, culture. Now, notice she doesn't have everything complete. But that's fine. She's already started this nice organization, uh, this logical organizational um, pattern here that she's using to access her content. So that's a good way to start is actually think first in terms of the navigational bar, not start with the content or the artifacts that are going to later go into each of those pages. But start first with the navigational bar. She might later th then decide to add, in addition to English skills, she could have one for applied linguistics. She could have another uh, link to teaching methodologies. She could have another one for the teaching practicum, or just called teaching practice, or just practicum. Now, you could choose the word as you want, but you notice here that she's already designed kind of the outline of how she's going to develop and how she can easily add content to her ePortfolio. So I really like this way that she's begun. You don't have to do it exactly like this. You choose how you want to navigate, but it should have some logical pattern. It should be easy for someone who is visiting your ePortfolio for the first time to easily be able to find the content. That's the key. All right, so uh, this is one way to do it, and and um, you know again, you know, include probably the thing that would be missing here is a, a video, uh, an introduction video to make it even more engaging, right? So as you're visiting, you can watch a short video to hear the person, the the content creator in this case, you guys, and also hear a brief introduction of the e-portfolio, maybe even the purpose, right? What what are your goals, your long-time goals with creating this online space? Those are things that you can include in the video, okay? So this is one way to do it. And that's what I would recommend is to think about how you want to organize your ideas. The navigational bar, okay, this is what we talked about, thinking how... Uh, you can include different titles to reflect each of the subpages. The artifacts now. So for uh, our final ePortfolio for this class, I'm going to ask everyone to try to include at least five artifacts from our class this semester, from our listening and speaking class for this first semester. And I'm also going to ask that you try to include at least five artifacts from any of your other Trope classes. Right now, this is at least right. So if you want to include more, great. You include whatever you would like to include, but try to include at least 10 artifacts overall, five from our class, five from other classes. Now, you might also include some artifacts from any prior experiences or Experiences that are, for, you know, not related to Prope courses. So if you were involved or are involved in some sort of activity that you're proud of, some sort of accomplishment that happened either this semester or let's say last year, you know, prior to Prope classes that relate to you as, as a professional. So remember that everything that you put in your ePortfolio should be some reflection of your current skills, your current uh, skills, your current knowledge, and your disposition, your attitude, your ethics. Think about those three aspects in terms of you as a professional and what you can bring, what kind of artifacts that you can share, some objects, some you know accomplishments. You could also include those as well. Right, so this is a very personal and professional space that you can decide to include uh, other things. And maybe it doesn't directly relate to teaching, 
but it relates to you as a professional. So you can consider any of those types of artifacts if, if you have any that you want to include. The last thing to include in your ePortfolio, uh, in addition to the artifacts, is some sort of reflection, an audio or video. I'll, I'll let you choose if you want to create an audio or video or several audios and videos throughout your ePortfolio that reflect on the artifacts. Now, what do I mean by reflect? What I mean by reflection is a an explanation, a description of the experience of creating the artifact. What did you learn? What, what did you find challenging? What challenges might or did you overcome? Maybe there were some concerns or fears that you had, but after the experience, how did you feel after? Remember that the whole point of your ePortfolio is to show what you learned and what you, uh, what you gained from the experience. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's your best work. Okay, of course, if there's something that you consider your best work and you want to share it, wonderful. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's your best work. It could be something that you look back and you think, wow, I, I really didn't do that great on it, but I learned so much about this one thing. Maybe you gained a little bit of confidence in doing something, but maybe the actual product, what you completed, was not wonderful. Okay, explain that. Because then we can see, okay, well, I see you learned this particular thing by doing this, and that's what we want to see. That's what you're showing off is what you learned, what you gathered from the experience. So try to keep that in mind. The artifacts can be something that you consider your, your best work, but not necessarily. And that's where the reflection, re either way, if it's your best work or even if it's not your best work, in the reflection, you need to comment and explain, maybe even justify, right, what, what you did in those artifacts. Okay, does that, does that make sense, guys? Do you understand what I mean? Are those different types of artifacts? Yeah. Yes. All right. So, so really think about the artifacts, right? And um, and try to try to make these audios and videos. Now, there are many different ways that you can do this, and this is going to be very personal based on how you're organizing your e-portfolios. You might have a, a audio or video reflection for each artifact where you end up having, let's say, for example, 10 uh, reflective videos, one for each artifact. That's one example. Or maybe you have one reflection, audio, or video, and depending on how you're organizing it, you might relate that one reflection to two or three artifacts. Right? If it's for one class in reading, for example, you have two artifacts there. Maybe you have one reflection video or audio that addresses or that talks about those two artifacts. So there are many different options. I, I probably would not suggest that you have just one reflection that talks about all of the artifacts. Okay, You, know, you probably are going to have anywhere from three to four up to 10 if you, have, if you really want to have a separate reflection for each artifact. Um, so it, it could vary. The, it, the, it could vary in terms of the number of audios or videos that are going to be reflections, that are going to be reflective. Now, you might have audios and videos that are artifacts, so make sure that you understand the difference between an audio and video that's an artifact and an audio and video that's a reflection about the artifact. The simplest example is many of the audios and videos that you've created in this class will <clears throat> function as artifacts. In fact, <clears throat> excuse me, all of the artifacts that we've created, I'm sorry, all of the audios and videos that we've created are artif artifacts. Even the reflective 
Art of, <clears throat> the reflection audios and videos that we've created are artifacts. So there might be a case where you have a reflection about a reflection. Remember when we I asked you to do a, a debate and or a reflection, in fact, we talked about doing a reflection video about the use of ICTs. So you guys were talking about how you felt about using certain artifacts in different classes this semester. That is an artifact. Even though it's a reflection, it's still an artifact because it was an activity that you did this semester. So you could have a reflection about how you felt about reflecting in the class, right? Or what you got out of it. Maybe you learned something about some of your classmates as well, that you had some things either in common or, you, or, or not based on your comments and your discussions and working in your meetings, right? You could even talk about how you, um, you know, what you learned from working together with your classmates in order to create the video, right? All of those could be t in terms of a reflection video about an activity that was also reflective, if that makes sense, okay? So we have artifacts and we have reflections about the artifact. All right, we also have include a range of different types of artifacts. So it's always good to mix it up, you know, to have different types. You could have audios and videos, documents. It could be Word documents or PDFs. Um, I probably would suggest, unless there's something with, I'm thinking maybe of an example where a Word document would be better than a PDF. My feeling is probably a PDF, in most cases, is going to be a better option than uploading a Word document just so that no changes can be made, that it's actually a, a permanent type of document. So um, although I'm, I'm including Word as an option, probably a PDF would be a better option. You might have some images. If it's something that you created and, um, you know, it's, it serves as an image, you could include that. And then reflect, reflection, right, could also be included in there, um, et cetera. All right, so just a kind of a short but I think uh, useful checklist for you to consider as you continue working on your portfolios uh, this week and next. I was I, My intention was to give you some time today. We're almost out of time. Um, but again, we're going to have next week to continue working on your ePortfolio, but I really want you to spend some time thinking about the design, working with your team members. We're going to continue working next week with the same group, so our same teams, and really make this, although it's an individual assignment, each of your ePortfolios you're doing individually, I really want you to continue working with your team mates and sharing and and comparing, seeing what they're doing. And if something works for, for you that's common to what they're doing, fine. If you want to do something different, fine. But really share the process of creating your ePortfolios with your teammates so that you uh, make it as transparent as possible, that we learn together from all of us what we're doing and give suggestions. Ask your partners for suggestions. Of course, ask, ask me for suggestions if you need to. But really try to ask for assistance and share your experiences creating your ePortfolio so that, that we can continue this idea of working as a community, right? As a uh, working together to create the best online space for our particular purpose. So any questions or comments about the ePortfolio, about anything that we've talked about or things that you've been thinking about and working on in your, on your own ePortfolio that you want to share? Me, teacher. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I just have a question. It's like uh, we have to put... Uh, I I didn't I didn't know how to say it. Well, I can uh, put like one artifact uh, for each um, 
materia. <laughs> or it has to be like five for each uh, materia. <laughs> All right. So what I would what I would like to ask is that you include at least five for our class for listening and speaking, right? Because uh, okay, okay, five that that's one. And yeah, one one is there are two aspects, and let me let me go back to the checklist to show you where I mentioned this. So the one thing is that I'm asking everyone to try to include at least five artifacts for our class only. And I ask that because you have a lot to choose from. You guys have worked really hard this semester. You have a lot of options to choose from. So this is probably the easiest in, in terms of just choosing at least five. And if you want to choose more, Godspeed, go for it, right? Um, but at least five from our class. And then I would also like that you to choose at least five from some other propate classes. Now, here is where you can choose, um, you know, the classes. You don't have to choose at least one from each propate class. You can, you can choose whatever artifacts from whatever other propate classes that you wish. Let's say that you, um, you had a lot of artifacts that you want to share from your culture class, as an example. Well, then you can choose all five from that one culture class. You decide. Remember that your decision to choose these artifacts is based on either your best work or an experience of creating the work, the artifact, where you felt that you learned something, that you, you learned a lot, right? Or you learned something. So it's one or, one or the other. And, and I would like a total of at least five artifacts but five from our class, five from any of the other probate classes, okay? And then that's where you can decide yourself how many other uh, classes you want to include. It's all going to depend on the artifact. The artifact should tell you, right? I mean, that's the... Think of the learning experiences that you've had in creating these artifacts and helping you to decide which ones to include in your ePortfolio. Okay, does that answer your question, Fernanda? Yeah, yes, it's your thing. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions, my friends? Teacher. Yes. Oh. You, Susana. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so if we want to uh, put, for example, for listening and speaking, when we did uh, the debate, we have to upload uh, the video of the debate that we did. You can, yes, you can upload the, the video. Now, there are different ways. You could upload it to your own YouTube and then embed it, or there are different ways that you can do it. But yes, that's what I would, that's what I would do. And, you know, if it, it depends on the, what you want to share, and, and let me give you an example. Let's say that you have a video with your teammates that you want to share, but let's say that the video, um, for whatever reason, you decide it's it's there's only a, a small piece of the video. Maybe it's not the entire video. You can include the, the whole video, but feel free to modify certain parts of the video if you want to focus on certain aspects that you want to comment or reflect on. So remember that every artifact should have a reflection at some point. So think about what you want to reflect on about the video in this example. And then you can decide, do I want to play the whole video or not? And if it's a video from that's a, with teammates, I would ask the permission of everyone that took place, that took part in that video, just say, do you mind if I post it to my ePortfolio? And I want everyone to feel free to, to say, no, I don't feel comfortable posting the video. Okay? So I hope, you know, I encourage, I mean, everybody really did a lot of good work this semester, and I hope that you are okay with sharing that. But always get the permission from your classmates, right? And there's nothing wrong with saying, look, 
can you cut out this one piece because I don't like when I did this or whatever, if that's the case, right? I, I hope you guys don't feel so critical about your own work, right? But, you know, I understand if you don't want something shared publicly. So always keep that in mind. Just make sure that you ask your classmates if it's a video where you're talking as a group. Of course, if you're just doing a video by yourself, if it's a Flipgrid video, then of course, you know, that's up to you. You can you can post it and do whatever. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different things that you can consider. But yes, you could include the video that you did with your teammates. Uh, just make sure that you get their permission. Okay, that's right. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Anybody else? Have any questions? Teacher, I only have one question. Uh, when is the limit of time to turn on, like, the either put a folder, the complete? Uh, I'm going to ask everyone to try to complete it by next Friday. Okay. Next Friday. So we'll have another week, and I'll try to give you some time in class as well. But decide, you know, if you need to be working on it outside of class to include whatever you need to, just take that into consideration. But um, I'm sharing this list with you of things, this checklist, so that you yeah. can take that into consideration next week so that we can try to finish next Friday. Next Friday is going to be our last day of regular classes. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what I had in mind, is to try to complete the ePortfolio for next Friday, December 11th. Okay, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? No, did you? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, I thought somebody was going to ask something. Um, uh, talking about the Creative Commons and the images, um, what if I took images from, I don't know, from books or something, but those books, shows like the author or the editorial or the name of the book i don't know something something that could be like private a private or i don't know uh, i just have that question if it's okay if i can add those kind of images to my portfolio and and actually those images are not like they are like a wallpaper uh, or something they're just like this they are not in like in the gallery or something. They are just like, uh, you know, for a wallpaper, probably. Okay. Are they? Is this a published sure. book? Though a book like a printed book, a physical book? Ah, uh, sorry. Is the book that you're talking about, Adan? Is it a physical book? Yeah. All right. And can you? Does it say in the opening pages if it's what the copyright is? Does it say like all rights reserved or does it say Creative Commons? Does it say? No, I didn't understand the question actually, teacher. Okay. In the first pages of any book, they okay. usually have a, a copyright page and it'll say, sometimes okay. it'll say all rights reserved. All rights reserved is a type of license. All. And, um, I'm going to write it in the chat. Um, that's a typical license when someone publishes a book. Or it could be called a Creative Commons license if it's a book that's licensed under that type of license. That's going to be less likely, but it's possible. Um, so th to answer your question, you need to find first the first couple of pages to see if it's licensed, if it's copyrighted under all rights reserved or Creative Commons, or possibly public domain, which would be a possibility. If it's all rights reserved, I would suggest that you not post any images whatsoever <clears throat> from the book. All right, now, what I will say is, if you can find an image very similar, or even, yeah, maybe the same image online, where maybe it was published under a Creative Commons license. You know, I 
I would try to keep this as simple as possible. I know we find a lot of images that we really want to use and we like the images, but really um, I would stick to anything that you know for sure that is a Creative Commons license. And then we can talk about this if you want to scan me the picture or we can, you know, figure out ways to creatively search, you know, content that you're trying to achieve. Uh, we can deal with that if you want, if you need some further suggestions. But my short answer would be, I would say no. Anything from a printed book or even an online electronic book, most of these books are under an all rights reserve. This is a typical license that says, you need my permission to use anything. And so... For our purposes, we're trying to finish this within a week. To try to get permission from the author to use anything is probably not realistic. Um, and so my, my short answer would be to try to stick to Creative Commons images that you don't need to get permission as long as you pay attribution, that you give credit. Remember that we give credit by including a link, maybe mentioning the author's name, and including the type of license. Is it a CCBY? What kind of Creative Commons license is it? And again, we can, if you need help with that, just ask, and I can give you specific uh, instructions about how to, to do that. Okay, sure. All right. Yeah. Okay. I know sometimes it's hard not to be able to use the content we want, but I, I would rather you not have problems. I don't want anyone to have problems with using content uh, for their ePortfolio. Now, I will say this. If you're embedding a YouTube video, and I'm trying to think of a reason you would probably do that, and you probably wouldn't do that, but just as an example, you can embed typically content that is under other types of licenses without problems. If it's a an embed or even a link, right? You could link to anything essentially and not have a problem. That's different. But when you actually download a file, a document, right, and input it into your ePortfolio, that's the difference. Now you're you have to be careful that it's either a Creative Commons or it's your own content. All right, any other? Okay, I hope that helps, Sadan. Does that address your question? Yeah. Okay, okay. any other any other questions, guys? I don't mind don't don't mind going over a little bit cuz these are really good questions and these are exactly the types of questions that I would expect uh that you guys to have. So make sure that as you're getting into your ePortfolio, bring in your questions next week, each day. And I'm going to continue looking through your ePortfolios, trying to give you some group feedback about what to consider, some changes that might be necessary. And uh, yeah, we'll work on it next week. All right, guys, I think we'll stop there for today. Uh, yes, I go ahead. I have a question about regarding the, the videos that you couldn't enter or you couldn't access uh, the other day. Um, I don't know if you remember that you couldn't uh, access to those videos uh, before uh, Team 4. Uh, and I, team was able, I was able to do it, Adan. And, okay. and um, I uploaded, I think I uploaded everybody's uh, videos. I think I did that yesterday. I'm going to now invite the instructors from Propay to take a listen to your uh, to your uh, your feedback that you created, and um, so yeah, I think we got all the videos. I think we're okay there. Okay, teacher. That's, yeah, that's I think uh, this week was weird with Teams, and I think other students and I know my boys were having some issues too with accessing. Microsoft, so I don't know what what's what was going on there. All right, guys, I think we'll stop there. Um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. We'll start next Monday, get back to our ePortfolios, finishing our last week of the course. And, um, yeah, we'll stop there for today. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. See ya.
Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.